over the years, a lot of cool skate parks have been built. There's been skate parks in backyards, skate parks next to the ocean, and even skate parks in the desert. In this video, we're going to go over some of the coolest skate parks in the world. If you feel like any good ones were left out, go ahead and share them in the comments. And with that said, let's get right into it. To start things off, we have the House of Vans in London. The House of Vans is a 33,000 square foot indoor space that's spread across five old train tunnels. It's a mixed venue that includes a full skate park, a cinema, an art gallery, a music venue, a bar, and a cafe. Aside from the fact that it's literally located in an underground train tunnel, one of the coolest things about this park is that it's actually free to skate. This is a huge benefit because London isn't exactly known for having the best weather, and indoor parks essentially always cost money. The park is by no means the biggest skate park out there, but it is well built. Because of the confined space, some of the ramps can be kind of tightly packed, but overall, they made great use of the limited area available. Even though it's nothing too crazy, the entire venue is a really cool place, and the skate park is definitely one of a kind. A few seconds of honesty. Many of you have never seen me, but I wear glasses, and I want to tell you a secret about the best place to buy glasses online. I'm a bit picky with glasses, and anyone who wears glasses can relate to how hard it is to find a pair that you love and feel great in. Thanks to GlassesUSA.com, I can find my glasses easily. They have thousands of styles and brands, like Ray-Ban, Oakley, Gucci, and more. They're 70% off retail price and cut out the middleman, so you can buy a complete pair at $39, plus free prescription lenses and free shipping. Moreover, they have amazing features like the virtual try-on and a smart quiz that can help you find your match. GlassesUSA.com is offering a crazy exclusive discount on top of any coupon code they currently have on the website just for my subscribers. And you can click on the links at the top of my description box to get all the details. Personally, I got some really nice prescription glasses and I also got some nice sunglasses as well. So regardless of what kind of glasses you need, GlassesUSA.com probably has something you would like. Thanks GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring today's video. The second park on the list is Whipsnake Skate Park. Whipsnake Skate Park is a massive 1970s style DIY skate park built in a remote area of South Carolina. It's over 13,000 square feet and is currently the largest privately owned skate park on the East Coast. Instead of having clear cut sections like most skate parks, Whipsnake is basically one big snake run that completely blends together. There's a nice mixture of some mellow transitions along with some more steep transitions and it has a ton of obstacles that you almost never see at normal parks. The owner is an engineer and an architect and he's constantly expanding the park and adding weird new features. Since it is a privately owned park, it's a little tough to get a session there. But if you like skating weird obstacles, it's pretty much a dream park to visit. The Floating Hotel Skate Park. There are a surprising amount of hotel skate parks out there. Most of them offer some sort of bowl or skatable feature at the hotel, and some of them are actually pretty nice. When it comes to the Botel in Amsterdam though, things are a little different. It's not exactly a full on skate park, but the floating hotel offers a suite inside of the letter B on the roof that has a built in mini ramp and a flat bar on the inside. The reason why this one really stands out is because it's kind of bizarre compared to most hotel skate parks. Not only is it a hotel, but it's a floating hotel. Not only is it a skate park, but it's a skate park inside of the room. And not only is it a room, but the room is literally a giant letter B on the roof. The park itself isn't anything spectacular, but when you take everything into consideration, it's easily one of the most unique skate parks in the world. Skate Laborious. Skate Laborious is a full-on skate park that's built in an actual church from 1889 with stained glass windows and all. The church had been abandoned for years, and a skateboarding nonprofit group took it over and converted it into a skate park. As far as the layout goes, the park is pretty solid, and they did a good job at making use of the space. It has a really nice street section that takes up most of the room, but it also has an indoor vert ramp, which these days is pretty rare to see. Even though it mainly functions as a skate park, Skate Laborious also has plans to operate as a bed and breakfast, an art venue, and an education center. This is a really cool park because they found a building that was completely abandoned and transformed it into something that can actually help the community. Since they do operate as a nonprofit, I'm going to leave a link to their site in the description just in case anyone wants to donate. Skatopia. Skatopia is an 88 acre compound in a rural town in Ohio and is often referred to as an anarchist skate park. It's known for having crazy parties with tons of fireworks, 
metal bands, and even burning cars. Despite being in the middle of nowhere, Skatopia is arguably one of the most famous skate parks in the world. It's been in plenty of TV shows, it's been in magazines, and it was even a level in Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Now the park itself is spread out across a massive compound. There's a variety of bowls and pools, and there's even a full pipe. The thing is, most of the stuff there is kind of sketchy, so it's probably not the best place for beginners. Aside from the park, Skatopia also has a ton of art, a skateboarding museum, and a custom-made igloo. There's definitely a lot of cool skate parks out there, but Skatopia is basically in its own category. The Glow in the Dark Skate Park. It's hard to know exactly how they did it, but a company actually created an indoor glow in the dark skate park in Australia. I couldn't find a lot of information about it, so I'm guessing they just painted an existing park and threw up some black lights, but either way, it looks like something that could definitely be fun to skate. Obviously, this park is mostly just cool for the novelty of it, and it's not like you'd want to skate it every day, but it's definitely a weird idea, so it's nice to see that someone made it work. Camp Woodward Skate Parks Camp Woodward is an action sports complex with several locations in the US. Since all of their locations are pretty cool, we're going to group them all together as one. The Woodward in Pennsylvania is probably the most popular, but they also have locations in Park City, Utah, Copper Mountain, Colorado, and Lake Tahoe, California. All of their parks are really well built and offer a ton of variety in terms of things you can skate. Oftentimes, they'll even have several different styles of parks at each of their locations. For example, they have indoor wooden skate parks, they have outdoor concrete skate parks, they have DIY style skate parks, and they even have less common types of parks like vert ramps or snake runs. Also, unlike most skate parks, Woodward has a ton of uncommon features that make it much easier to progress. They have a mixture of different types of foam pits and ramps with rubber landings that make it a lot easier to fall without getting hurt, so it's not as hard to try more difficult tricks. Each location has a ton of weird stuff to skate, so they definitely deserve a spot on the list. Up next, we have Amplitude Skate Park in Bali, Indonesia. This is a park that's gotten a lot of attention online. It's a 3,000 square meter skate park that's mostly known for its giant pump track with a bowl in the middle. Unlike the majority of pump tracks, this one doesn't follow a set path, and it has a ton of options in terms of routes that you can take. Even though the pump track is the most eye-catching feature of the park, it also has a small beginner area as well as a huge street section. This one is kind of weird because even though plenty of skate parks also have a pump track, they're usually a side feature and they're definitely not that big. The cool thing about this park is that it managed to build a really unique obstacle as the main focus, but it's also well-rounded enough for pretty much anyone to skate. The Farm Skate Park This skate park really isn't a skate park at all but it's still worth mentioning. A couple of years back, a company built a mini ramp in the middle of a massive field of crops. And even though it's not technically a skate park, it is a pretty solid ramp, which is close enough. There's not a ton of footage of it, but in the videos you can find, it looks like it's a really fun place to skate. It's sitting in the center of the largest crop field in Australia, and it's pretty much all you can see for miles. If we're being honest, the location might not be the most practical, but you got to admit, it is creative. It's hard to find a lot of info about the ramp, so who knows if it's still there or not, but either way, it's still a really cool project. Innsbruck Plaza. This park is a great example of cities embracing skateboarding. Rather than finding some sketchy part of town to throw up a poorly built skate park, they built a massive plaza in the middle of the city. The plaza has a variety of both street and park obstacles, but they're built in a way that naturally flows with the surrounding architecture. Everything is spaced out, so it's large enough that skaters can skate there without disturbing other pedestrians. This is one of the coolest skate parks out there, not because it has the best obstacles or because it's the most expensive, but because it shows the potential of future skate parks. A skate park can be fun regardless of where it is, but this plaza just goes to show that there are other possibilities available. Don't get me wrong, I love a good skate park underneath the bridge, but this plaza really sets a great example. The Frying Pan Skate Park. The Frying Pan slash Bacon and Eggs slash Breakfast Skate Park is hands down one of the most unique skate parks ever made. As I'm sure you probably noticed, it's essentially a giant pan with two eggs and a piece of bacon. And the entire thing was made to skate. The park was made by a local artist who wanted to make an interactive art installation. And for whatever reason, this is what he came up with. 
The Breakfast Skate Park is extremely popular on social media, and people travel from all over to visit. The funny thing is, the town it's in only has a population of around 500 people. So even though the park is a bit odd, it was actually a really good investment. Now, aside from the giant frying pan with eggs and bacon, there's also a relatively normal skate park that's built right next to it. This one doesn't get nearly as much attention, but if you look at the footage, it actually does seem like a fun park. The breakfast skate park isn't the first time someone has made a skatable art installation, but there's no denying that it's by far one of the most unique, the floating mini ramp. A few years ago, Bob Burnquist went to Lake Tahoe and built a mini ramp that literally floats on the water. I'm not sure how much it cost or how they even did it, but it is cool to see. The ramp has a normal quarter pipe section, an extended bank on the side of it, and it also has a pole jam that goes out over the lake. Even though it's on floating water, the ramp does seem pretty solid. Obviously, it's a little limited in terms of things to skate, but they did a good job at building a ramp that's genuinely unique. There's a lot of skate parks that are way bigger and way nicer, but skating a ramp surrounded by blue water and mountains is pretty hard to beat. The Mega Ramp. Now, unlike other parks on this list, there's actually several mega ramps in existence. When it comes to mega ramps, they tend to vary in size, but they all share the same features. They're essentially a giant ramp that goes across a large gap and leads to a massive quarter pipe. There's also some mega ramps with ledges or rails that go across the middle, and some ramps will even have custom add-ons. Since they cost millions of dollars to build, and they're such a unique type of ramp, there aren't very many mega ramps out there. They are a really unique type of skate park though, and even if you're not someone who skates big ramps, you can still appreciate the people who do. If you feel like any good ones were left out, go ahead and share them in the comments, be sure to leave a like on the video, and with that said, thanks for watching.